six, far away the noise of strife. Upon my ear is falling, let's all stand together as we sing. Dwelling in Beulah land on that first together. Far away the noise of strife. a good place to dwell all right and uh good to see you back in church this evening looking forward to what the lord has for us and tonight in our service let's bow and pray together shall we father we bow before you in prayer we do thank you lord for a good service this morning and for decisions that were made for you and lord we're asking you to meet with us again tonight thank you for each one who's made their way here to the service this evening and we pray lord that our hearts will be open our ears attentive to what you would want to say to each one of us tonight. Use the music, use our fellowship together, and once again, please honor and use the preaching of the Word of God in each one of our hearts and lives. And I'll thank you now for what I believe you'll do in our service together this evening, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. 361, 361, Heavenly Sunlight. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep veil. Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Shadows around me, shadows above. 
Now some announcements uh, right after the service tonight. Uh, all of you signed up to help with the missions conference. Uh, we'll have a meeting, and I think we better do it in here. I think we have too many to go in the conference room. Uh, so we'll meet on this side right over here by the piano uh, at the conclusion of the service tonight, okay? And we'll get you organized and uh, get you set in a direction to help out with our conference. That's coming up September 15 through 18. And uh, the missionary cards are back there on the table. These are we Sunday questionnaire uh, to the missionaries and uh, we just ask them uh, for what things they might need, what things they might want, and uh, not only a needs list but a wish list and uh, things that they'd like to have and then we try to meet those needs and be a blessing to them when the conference comes and uh, that's always an exciting time. We do that on Saturday evening and so that's what those cards are laid out for. The pictures of the missionaries coming are, are back there as well. And uh, feel free to uh, look at those cards. The ladies are there to direct you and help you with that. And um, sign out mission gift cards. I don't know what that means. They'll just take them off the table. Okay. Don't, don't just grab a card without telling the ladies what card you have because they, they record that, okay? That way we keep track of what's, what's out there and what has to come back in. And listen, every year we have this sometimes. Sometimes you pick some things up. And then you realize uh, maybe things happen or something changes and you can't get what you picked up. You know what I mean? You picked a card up to get something and then you can't do it. That's okay. Just bring it back in. Uh, give it to the ladies. They'll put it back in the mix. God will have someone else take care of that. Amen. All right? Don't, don't worry about that one bit. Uh, just, uh, j just do what you can do, what you believe the Lord would have you to do. And uh, that's, a, that's a fine thing. The pictures are there and the names are there uh, for you to begin to kind of get facial recognition with the names, and uh, you can uh, pray for them. Uh, we'll begin to have some of their prayer letters available for you uh, in the next week or two, so you can uh, be catching up on what they're doing and uh, what, what, what field they're on and what uh, kind of just catch you, so you get to know them a little bit. And uh, when they come here, uh, then you can welcome them and uh, feel like you kind of know them already. Okay, and we'll look forward to that. All right, and then so we have that meeting. Then tomorrow night, uh, 5 to 8, Tuesday night, 5 to 8, we'll be putting together the scriptures over in the Fellowship Hall with Bearing Precious Seed. Uh, Brother Phil Taylor and his wife will be here uh, to help us with that project. And Wednesday night, we'll dedicate those scriptures and have a special service uh, for that on Wednesday evening. And so that'll be a special time. Uh, someone asked if someone will have a nursery. We are having a nursery. Some of the ladies that are bringing their children are taking half-hour turns and uh, making sure we have child care throughout that time as well. So uh, you can uh, bring the children. And by the way, if they're of age, they can help. There's right. things they can do. I know down at uh, BPS on the missions trip, uh, uh, Emma Jean and Isaac and some of the smaller kids were all helping and carrying books or folding pages and things like that. And uh, it was a great time. Uh, good good, good uh, experience for them as well. Amen? Amen. So that'll be uh, this week. And then uh, Grove City School of the Bible. Some of you have filled the, the paper out down there. Brother Moreland, uh, again, sent the reminder he needs to order the curriculum. He needs to order the material. He doesn't know how many to order of each class unless you sign that sheet and say what classes you're taking. All right? So the sheet's down there on the table. Uh, those of you who are coming to the classes, I think there's five or so on that list, and I think we had about a dozen or 14 or so that uh, went to the meeting. Uh, sign up for that list down there, what classes you want to take, so then he can get the curriculum ordered. Okay? That's down there. Please do that. Uh, after the service tonight. The next Sunday, remember, is the 61st anniversary of Bible Baptist Church, and we'll celebrate by having dinner together over in the fellowship hall right after the service, and uh, enjoy that together. There's a sign-up sheet for that downstairs. Just follow the instructions on that and plan to stay and uh, have dinner with us next Sunday as we celebrate 61 years of Bible Baptist Church, okay? 
And uh, Sunday night, you saw we have uh, Brother Dean Kirshner. Brother Kirshner is like a, a missionary, I guess, slash evangelist type uh, fella. And uh, he does a very unique presentation. He's a, a friend that Bob Reed knows. Don't hold that against him. Uh, no, he's, <laughs> he's a friend of Bob's from years ago. And uh, he does a, a very interesting presentation that has to do with a Russian soldier. Is that right, Brother Bob? I've seen a little bit of it uh, on uh, YouTube and such, and it's, uh, it's very, very good. Uh, very, uh, uh, you'll, just, you'll be blessed by that and uh, challenged by that as well. And so uh, you'll want to be part of that. That'll be next Sunday evening, and uh, we'll enjoy hearing Brother Kirshner then. All right? All right, I want to take just a moment and see if there's any visitors with us tonight. And... Uh, Good to, good to have Matthew and Carrie back with us this evening. Glad they're here. And I missed Cedric this morning. And uh, this is Cedric Harwell right here. And Cedric is from our RU Inside program out of London. And uh, I think he's originally from Tennessee. Is that what I heard? And uh, so he's, uh, he's with us today. And we're sure glad Cedric is here. And uh, good, good man in our RU program. And just uh, been a great blessing to us. You want to give him a card there? At least you fill the card out and you get a free pen out of it. Okay, Cedric? And uh, there you go. And uh, glad you're here, my friend. And uh, that's great. All right. All right. Let's give Cedric a warm welcome, shall we? Hundred thirty-seven in your hymnal. Would you turn with me, please? Three, three, seven. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. Trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory. Trust and obey. On that last C, 
sing it together. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, for we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. All right. Well, we have an anniversary to celebrate this evening, uh, Don and Cindy Taylor. Um, they were gone last Sunday, so we didn't get to, on August 4th, they celebrated their anniversary, and we want to honor them tonight, celebrating their anniversary, August 4th, right? Yeah. Is, did I say that? What did I say? August 4th, yeah, August 4th. You thought, you thought I was wrong once, but you were wrong, right? And, uh, I tell my wife that all the time, but it doesn't work, but, um, <laughs> glad to have them. But Pastor and Kathy as well, yeah. on Thursday, I believe, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. thrills my soul is Jesus 539 539 let's stand as you find all that thrills my soul is Jesus <clears throat> who can cheer the heart like Jesus by his presence all divine true and tender pure and precious oh how blessed to call him my so freely given grace of God beyond degree mercy higher than the heaven deeper than the deepest sea Amen. Let's greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guest. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
Every need his hand supplying, every good in him I see. On his strength divine relying, he is all in all to me. All that thrills my soul is Jesus, he had more than life to me. And the fairest of 10,000 in my blessed Lord I see. Let's sing that last together, and when we get to the chorus, we'll have the pianist drop out, and we'll sing that a cappella on that last. By the crystal flowing river, with the ransomed I will sing, and forever and forever, praise and glorify the King. Good singing tonight. The ushers will come and get our offering now tonight. Uh, Brother Kirk, if I see you for just a minute after service, I'll try to get it get to you right before the meeting. Okay? I got the information that I think you've been wanting. All right? And uh, we'll take care of that afterwards. Okay? Let's uh, have prayer, and we'll ask God's blessing uh, on our offering tonight. Brother Tabor, lead us in our prayer, please. Okay, let us pray. Dear Father, we, we thank you for another great day that you've given us, Lord, and even down to the rains that we need so bad, Lord. Father, you, you supply all our needs. We thank you for being here with us tonight. As we take up this offering, Lord, may we, may we all remember to give back that portion that small amount, Lord, that you asked for. Help us to give with a cheerful heart. Be with us as the pastor opens the message tonight. And help us all to be attentive to hear what the word would say to us, Lord. And we thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your Bible this evening to Revelation chapter 12, if you would, please. Revelation chapter 12. We're going to read verses 7 through 11. Verses 7 through 11. We'll begin together on 7. I'll read 8. Together again on 9 and alternate till we end together on verse 11 of Revelation chapter 12. 
And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture, all of us standing to read God's word, and let's begin on verse 7 of Revelation 12. Ready? And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here this evening. Father, I pray that you will prepare each of our hearts for what you want to say to us tonight. Thank you for the wonderful music this evening, and Lord, it's such a blessing to sing the songs of God. Lord, thank you for the people of God that are in this place who love you, will sing to you, and Lord, listen carefully to what you would want them to say. And Lord, I pray that you would all have ears to hear, to hear what you would want to say to us this evening, that we would listen carefully. And then we would live the Bible we learn as we prepare to receive your word tonight. Bless the special now, in Jesus' name, amen. In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle, be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, I have a Savior. In times like these, I have an anchor. I'm very sure, I'm very sure. My anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. That's good. Now, Father, we bow before you in prayer, and Father, we are thankful tonight that we have a Savior. We're thankful tonight that we have a Bible. We're thankful tonight that there's a church. We're thankful tonight that there's a Holy Spirit that indwells believers. And Lord, we're asking you to speak to our hearts tonight through your word. Use your word in the lives of your people by thy spirit to minister to the needs of each and every individual here. And Lord, I pray tonight we'd realize that we're in a warfare, we're in a battle. We know who the enemy is, and you've given us everything we need to overcome the enemy. 
And I pray, Lord, we would experience the victory that you desire we have. And we would learn tonight how to overcome our enemy. And so help us as we bring the message and help each individual to say, listen, please. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to hold your finger in Revelation 12, and I'd like you to look back at Deuteronomy chapter 7. Would you flip back to the book of Deuteronomy and look at chapter 7 with me? It's a, kind of a, laying a foundation for our message this evening. Deuteronomy 7 is where the Israelites are ready to go into the promised land that God has promised them, and He's giving them instructions as they enter into the, what's called the promised land or the land of Canaan. And it says in Deuteronomy 7, if you're there, look at verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations before thee, and he lists them, Hittites and Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites, the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. When the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou uh, make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not be given unto his son, and nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And if I could draw a parallel between the people of Israel going into the land of Canaan to you and I obtaining and living a victorious Christian life. Canaan is not a picture of heaven. There's no enemies to cast out when we get to heaven. There's no foes to fight when we get to heaven. Uh, but there are battles to fight here. And God says, you're going into the land of Canaan and He's saying, here's what you have to do. You have to utterly drive out. By the way, nations, in fact, look there. You still at Deuteronomy 7? Notice what He said. He said, these are seven nations greater and mightier than thou. The enemy we face, and by the way, the enemy, in case you're not sure about it, your enemy as a believer is the devil. And he is greater and mightier than we are. He's not greater and mightier than God is. Uh, not even close, and, and we'll say more about that a little bit later. But He is greater and mightier than us. And, and God is saying, when the Lord thy God shall deliver, how about Him before thee? Thou shalt smite Him and utterly destroy Him. Thou shalt make no covenant with Him. Don't make covenant with the devil. Don't show any mercy unto your enemy. Don't make marriages with Him. In other words, be careful, your daughter and your son, and talks about marriages there. Hey, you, you, you don't have unequal yokes. You, you're not going to win him. You're, she, you're not going to win him. He's not going to win her. Say, so, oh, he promised he'll go to church after we get married. You better do better than that. You better do better than that or you're in trouble. And, and he's saying, you, you, hey, you marry a daughter or a son of the devil and you're going to have trouble with your in-laws. All right, big time. And so, how many understand when you got married, uh, you didn't just marry the girl or married the man, you married his family? How many understood that? Okay, there you go. And uh, you understand how that works. He said, here's what you have to do you're going to break down their, you're going to destroy their altars, break down their images, you're going to cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. I, I believe God wanted them to have utter and complete victory. And I don't think anything's changed in God's plan for us as believers. We have an enemy. We identify him as Satan. In fact, Paul talks often about the battle that we have uh, in the enemy we face. Paul said, so fight I, not as one that beats the air. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, or in, rather in the book of Ephesians, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He wrote in 2 Timothy, I've fought a good fight. In other words, we get the idea we're in a warfare. 
Back in 1951, Professor James Stewart was a keynote speaker at Yale University. He made this statement. I fear that as Darwin has banished the Creator God, Freud will see to it that we replace spiritual warfare with phobias and psychological jargon. We're there. How much of what is passed off as a phobia or some psychological issue is nothing more than spiritual warfare going on. But we don't want to call it that. Billions of dollars are spent every year on antidepressants. I mean, people who need to take a pill to go to sleep at night and a pill to wake up in the morning and a pill to get them through the day. That's Christian people. People who claim to know Christ. You need to remember the source of the problem is Satan. The enemy is the devil. Revelation 12, where we started our reading tonight. It talks about our adversary. And he's called that many times in the Bible. And he uses a few of the names here that the devil goes by in the Bible. It says the dragon. It calls him the old serpent. It calls him the devil. It calls him Satan. He's a deceiver. Can I tell you tonight with full confidence in what the Word of God says and the Bible calls Satan what he is? The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Whatever he tells you is not true. There comes a time when you better hate the enemy. And the enemy we better hate is the devil. And, and listen, when you see what sin will do to the lives of people, you'll hate the devil. When you see what, 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 hey, when I see babies being murdered in the womb, I hate the devil. When I see uh, drugs ruin the lives of people, I hate the devil. When I see divorce rear its ugly head, even in our Christian homes, I hate the devil. I, I see families where children are in charge instead of the parents. I hate the devil. When I hear the rock and roll music, I hate the devil. When I see the destructive path of pornography in the lives of people, I hate the devil. I, when I see churches that will quit their soul winning program and quit their bus ministry and take Baptist off the name of their church, I hate the devil. The Bible makes it clear here. The prop, Listen, our problem is we tolerate him. Our problem is we compromise with him. Our problem is we negotiate with him and we make deals with him. And God makes it clear that that's not the way to victory. Now Israel, and if you follow the progression in the Old Testament, they did not obey God's command. and They left some people in the land and they didn't utterly drive them out. And it caused them pain and sorrow and suffering all their days. Many Christians, when we talk about overcoming Satan, they feel like, well, that's a good concept, but it's not really reality. We sing, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever, and, and we sing, onward, Christian soldiers, and we say, from victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. But the truth of the matter is, that's not where most Christians live. We're to overcome the devil. Here in Revelation 12, it talks about Satan being cast out and cast down and, and, and he calls him the accuser of our brethren and he is. And it says that they overcame him. One of the great things about the Bible and one of the enjoyable things about the Bible is when it will outline itself. And here's one of those cases in the Bible where the Bible outlines itself. Verse 11 says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. So when God says, I want you to overcome Satan, I want you to defeat the enemy, He doesn't leave us as to how that ought to be done. We're not wondering and trying to figure out, well, how can I get victory over Satan? He says, I'm going to lay it out for you, phrase by phrase. And let's look at it this evening, shall we? He says, number one, you overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. First of all, let me help you understand something. You'll never overcome Satan 
until you are a Christian. You'll never overcome Satan until you are saved by the blood of the Lamb. If you never have trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior to forgive your sin and received His gift of eternal life, my friend, you're not ever going to be against, you're never going to overcome Satan. He's going to be in control of your life till the day you die. And then you'll be bound to go to hell. Listen, Genesis 3.15, God gave a promise to Eve and He said that your seed is going to bruise, your seed is going to crush Satan's head and Satan will bruise his heel. I don't know about you, I'd rather have a bruised heel than a crushed head. Make sense? I mean, if someone had said, now I got hurt this week, oh, what happened? Well, I bruised my heel. I'd say, well, I, I hope you get over that. I'm sure you rest it and get better, it'll get better. But if Mike called me up and said, hey, I, had a, I got hurt this week, I said, what happened? Well, I, I, my head was crushed in. First of all, he probably wouldn't be calling to tell me that, would he? <laughs> uh, there's no doubt. I'd get a phone call saying he got hurt at work, his head got crushed in because he wouldn't be able to talk. He'd be in eternity. Uh, that's pretty a fatal blow. And that victory's final. Hold your finger there in, Rome, in, in Revelation 12. Look with me to Colossians chapter 2, would you please? Colossians chapter 2. The Bible says here in verse 13, Colossians 2, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. God nailed all of that to His cross when He died on the cross. But wait, He wasn't done. And having spoiled principalities and powers, He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Triumphing over them in the cross. He triumphed over principalities and powers. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Hey, we have the victory over principalities and powers because of what Jesus Christ did when He died on the cross. The power of His blood. We're saved by His blood. We're victorious by His blood. There was blood when they put the crown of thorns upon His head. There was blood when they punched Him in the face. There was blood when they scourged him with the cat of nine tails. There was blood when they drove the spikes into his hands and into his feet. There was blood when they pierced his side and blood and water came out. I'm saying, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, listen, there is power, power, wonder, working power in the blood of the Lamb. Don't belittle the blood. Don't think lightly of the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Revelation 19, when Jesus Christ returns to set up His kingdom on this earth, He's going he's to have a, a vesture that He's going to wear across here that, 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 that is going to be dipped in blood. Because it's by the blood of Jesus Christ that we overcome Satan. By salvation, and, and listen, we, we have access to the throne of God. You know why? By the blood of Jesus Christ. It's through His blood that we have access to God. And so it's by His blood we have victory. By His blood we can come boldly into the presence of God. We overcome Him by the blood of the Lamb. There's nothing wrong with pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. That is power in the blood. And it still speaks today. Then the Bible says something else in verse 11, does it not? It says, They overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Their word of their testimony. Now, there's two things here. There's the word and there's the testimony. And they both go together. You understand, you can't just have the words and no testimony. But you don't just want a testimony and never open your mouth for Jesus either. It takes both. Tell others whose side you're on. 
Tell others who you identify with. And when you live right and you tell others of Jesus Christ, listen to me, that's your testimony. Sometimes people are brand new Christians and you say, uh, what's your testimony? They're not quite sure what that means. You know, that's not a familiar thing to, to someone maybe not grown up in a Christian church or grown up around Christian people. Somebody says, give me your testimony. They're like, what, what is that? Uh, how you live and what you say is your testimony as a Christian. It's what other people are watching. Why do you be faithful? Listen, why do you be faithful to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? Why do you be faithful to read your Bible, to study your Bible, to meditate in the Word of God, to pray daily, to give thanks to the table, to have a great appearance, to dress godly? Why? That's all part of my testimony. I want to have a good testimony for Jesus Christ. But yet I still must open my mouth and tell somebody what Jesus has done for me. There's not many people that are going to so live their life that people are just come up to you and say, man, I've watched the way you live. Tell me how I can be saved. You generally got to open your mouth. And you got to say something about the Lord Jesus and tell someone else what Jesus has done for you. The woman at the well we spoke of this morning in Sunday school got saved and, and immediately left her water pot and she went back to the city. Now here's a woman who's, who's been married and divorced five times. That would even be, uh, I'd say that would even be a bit unusual in our day. It was very unusual in their day. And no doubt a, a woman who, and by the way, was living with a fellow she wasn't married to and that would have been very unusual in their day. I remember a day as a child when I didn't know anybody that just lived together. Everybody I knew that was of that age was married. Nobody just shacked up. They knew that was wrong. And yet she goes into the city and tells them, hey, come see a man which told me all things ever I did. Is not this the Christ? And guess what? They listened to her. How about that? They came out to hear him. And some got saved because of what she said. Don't listen to the devil when he says, oh, don't you talk to them. They know about you or they know about your past or they know what you used to be or they know your inconsistencies. No, no, don't listen to the devil. The devil always tells you to shut up and God always tells you to speak up. Speak up for Jesus. Lee Robertson told the story of a man named Lambert Mims. He was unsaved and a representative of a flower company. F-L-O-U-R. Flower. Lambert had a drinking problem. As he went to call on one of his customers, there was an employee of that particular company named Joe Pope. And Joe was a Christian. Lambert did not know that until one day Lambert offered Joe a drink. And Joe said this, no, I don't intend to touch liquor as long as I live. Joe had gotten saved at a revival meeting. So, Lambert Sims, or Mims began to call Joe Holy Joe. Ridiculed him, made fun of him. Joe just kept smiling and said, you ought to get saved. You ought to give God a chance. God will change your life. And Mims would, when Mims would uh, say, don't talk to me that way. I don't need that. And that will go on every time Lambert Mims came to the company, every time he made his, his sales call, every time he'd offer Joe a drink, every time Joe would go through the same speech with him. Till one day, word came that Joe Pope had been killed in an automobile accident. And it was really interesting when they Somebody's phone ringing. You got it? Okay. When they went to view, went to the viewing, he looked down at Joe Pope and there was a smile on his face. And that brought so much conviction to Lambert Mims. As the people say, he fell on his knees right there by the casket and asked Jesus Christ to be his Savior. It was Joe Pope's constant testimony that won that man to Christ. His consistency. You see, that's the word of your testimony. During the Korean War, there was a group of believers in a little chapel when communist soldiers barged in with machine guns. 
One of the soldiers says, get up. They got up off their knees and he told them to line up against the wall. And at that point, he took a picture of Jesus Christ off the wall and he threw it on the floor. And he said, I want you to spit on that picture of Jesus Christ and curse His name. The first three men in line were all men of the church. And tragically so, they did exactly what the soldier told them to do. But the fourth person in line was a young girl of the congregation. And she walked up to the pitcher and she fell to her knees and she took her skirt and she began to wipe the spittle of those men off the picture of Jesus. And she said this, Go ahead and kill me. I cannot curse his name. The soldier said, Get up. They put a blindfold on her and they took her and the other three men out back of the chapel. And at that time, the people inside heard the gunshots go off. But the soldiers came back in. And they came back in with the girl alive. And the soldier said this, anyone who gives up what they believe that easily is not fit to be a communist. And they marched out. The young girl's life was spared because of the word of her testimony. Literally. How do we overcome Satan? The blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Hey, when's the last time you told somebody how you got saved? When's the last time you just told somebody, let me tell you about something happened in my life that was very important to me. And you just told them how you came to know Christ. Where's the word of your testimony? We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome him by the word of our testimony. And then the third thing mentioned here in verse 11 is, we overcome Satan by loving not their lives unto the death, by dying to self. Love not their lives to the death. Romans 6 and verse 11, Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. Do you reckon yourself to be dead to sin? Dead to self? Dead to what I want? In fact, look at John 12 and verse 24. Would you turn there please? John 12 and verse 24. Now Paul said over in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 31, he says, I die daily. He said, I have, to, I, have to, I have to put myself to death every single day. John 12 and verse number 24. Jesus teaching his disciples. <coughs> Excuse me. Notice what Jesus says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Jesus is telling us, listen, if you're not willing to die, you're never going to help anybody else. So I, don't, I, I want to do what I want. I want to do what I think. I want to do what I feel. You can live that way if you want, but you abide alone. You don't help anybody. What happens when you die? But if that corn of wheat, if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Herein is my Father glorified, John 15, verse 8, that ye bear much fruit. You cannot do that if you're not willing to die to yourself. I know, that's not real popular preaching. You're not going to hear that on the Joel Osteen channel. I know that. But it is on the Bible channel, amen? You're not really going to be a help to anyone until you die to yourself. Someone else said this, you'll never see the beginning of God until you come to the end of you. Now if God tells us to die to, to self, and Paul said I die daily, 
And Jesus said, if you don't die, you're going to abide alone and you'll never bring forth much fruit. Listen, if there's that much talk about self, we must struggle with ourself. And so we have to be willing to die to self. Whenever there's a conflict at home, whenever there's a conflict at church, whenever there's a conflict at school, whenever there's a conflict in work, whenever there's a conflict in marriage, I'll guarantee you self is involved. Somebody or several somebodies are being selfish. When you're not steady in your service for Christ, when you're not faithful to the house of God, when you're easily offended, when, when listen, you can be sure self is involved. Okay. Self will lead you to worldliness. Self will lead you to the sins of the flesh. Hmm? I thought it was interesting when you take you take flesh and just remove that last letter, H, you have S E L F self. That's what it leads to. Die to yourself. That's why and Paul said, listen, it's something I gotta be mindful of every single day. How many how many you think the Apostle Paul just there just might be a chance that he was a better Christian than you? Do you think that's a possibility? And do you think if he had to die to himself every day? Do you think that's something that we maybe ought to consider? And, and when you crucify yourself, when you crucify the flesh, that's, that's something you've got to have help to do. You cannot do that on your own. You, nobody can crucify themselves. So the Bible says, if you, in Romans 8, if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh. So what do you do? You yield to the Holy Spirit and say, you crucify my flesh today. My flesh is just doing what I want to do, doing what I feel like doing, doing what I think. That's what Galatians 2.20 is about. When Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. When Jesus was nailed to that cross, I was nailed to that cross. And I asked the Spirit of God to nail me to the cross. So that I might die to what I want, what I think, and what I feel, and I might live to what God wants, what God thinks, what God feels. I want to live, listen, and it's not just me living, but it's Christ living in me. And He can live in me and through me because I'm dead. Colossians, we quoted this morning, you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Your life isn't going to be hid with Christ in God if you don't die. You have to die. Get up in the morning. Make a, that's a conscious decision, my friend. That's a decision to make. I am crucified with Christ. That's not just something to read and say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I know that verse. Yeah, I memorized that verse when I was a kid in Bible school. No, no, no. Have you ever made that decision? Will you stand in front of the mirror tomorrow in the morning, first thing, and say, I am crucified with Christ? Spirit of God, crucify my flesh today. Let me be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God and the things of God. Get yourself out of the way. You're never going to overcome Satan until self is taken out of the way won't happen. Satan, Satan is perfectly happy to let a Christian be ruled by himself. Because when you're ruled by yourself, you will not follow God. 
All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. That's how we go astray. Just doing, hey, it doesn't matter. Satan does, we don't have to do what he wants just so we do anything but what God wants. And so, if we just want to do, well, I just don't see anything wrong with this. Well, I don't see what's so bad about this. Well, I don't see what, I don't see any harm in it. I don't know what's so bad. We come up with all these phrases. You know what that's a fancy way of saying? I want to do what I want. I want to do what I want. As long as you're doing what you want, you're not doing what God wants. I have to be willing to die what I want, what I think, what I feel, what I expect. That's a daily task. That's a daily task. If it was for Paul, it certainly would be for us. Don't let Satan steal your testimony. Don't allow him uh, don't, to, to belittle the blood of Christ. Don't listen to him when he says, oh, that's what the pastor says. You do what you want. Don't listen to Him. He'll leave you without any hope and without any strength. He'll use you and use you and then He'll kick you to the curb and leave you in the gutter and say, I'm done with you. Overcome Satan. I've never seen a, a, a day when so many Christians are beat down by Satan. And they're allowing him to have the victory. Hey, he is a defeated foe. There's no, yeah, yeah there, there, there was a struggle there between the angels and Satan, but listen, there's no struggle between God and Satan. God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He created Satan. He created him as Lucifer, an angel. And angels are there to do God's bidding. God could take, and listen, God has given us the victory. Greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. But Christ cannot come through us if we don't die to ourselves. As long as we're there, he can't be there. As long as we increase, he decreases. The only way for him to increase is for us to decrease and allow him to take over. Let's have victory over Satan. Victory over the enemy. How? The blood of the Lamb the word of our testimony, and dying to self. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for outlining for us here in Revelation how we can overcome our enemy. Lord, we understand that Satan seeks to push against us. We, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We understand who our enemy is. It's the devil. It's the accuser of the brethren. We understand that. And Lord, we understand that He is greater and mightier than we are. And just as You told the children of Israel to utterly drive out the enemy, and that You would enable them to do that, that you have, You've already gone before them and the victory was theirs, they just had to go fight the fight. And Lord, if we'll just resist Satan, he'll flee from us. God, help us. Through the blood of the Lamb, through the word of our testimony, by dying to self, to overcome him and live the victory that we sing about and we read about in your word. Oh, well, I'd love to hear testimonies of Christians who defeated Satan, who didn't yield his temptations didn't yield to his allurements, didn't succumb to his temptations. Lord, help us to overcome him as you desire for each one of us. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'll finish praying in just a moment. I wonder how many believers here tonight Say, preacher, I, the Lord spoke to me tonight.
about overcoming Satan in my life. Maybe there's some things that you realize you've been compromising. You've been, you've been allowing him access. You're to utterly drive him out. You're to not give place to the devil. Blood of the Lamb. Word of your testimony. Dying to self. Wonder how many folks tonight would say, Preacher, the Lord spoke to my heart tonight. I'm going to follow this formula of overcoming Satan in my life. Pastor, pray for me, please. Here's my hand as a testimony. Would you lift it up? Would you lift it up? God bless you. Amen. Amen. Hands across the building tonight. God bless you. You may put them down. Oh, what a difference it'll make in our lives and the lives of those people we're trying to influence for God. Heavenly Father, thank you for decisions that have been made for you tonight. And I pray, Lord, your blessing upon this invitation. Pray that each one of these would do as you're bidding them to do in their heart. Each of us would yield to you now. We would live in the victories that you desire us to live in. That we would live from faith to faith, from victory unto victory. Your army shall you lead till every foe is vanquished. Christ is Lord indeed. Father, hear our prayer we make on our bended knee this evening now. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, you stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays by the Bible, sing the invitation hymn. God has spoken to your heart tonight. You respond to him. Will you please? Take my life That's right. and let it be consecrated Lord to thee take my hands <clears throat> and let them move at the impulse of thy love at the impulse of thy love take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee Take my voice and let me sing Always only for my King Always only for my King Take my lips and let them be Filled with messages for Thee Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my love, my God, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself. And I will be ever only all for thee, ever only all for Father, we bow before you in prayer now this evening. Lord, thank you for a wonderful Lord's Day together. Thank you for faithful people in the house of God Sunday morning, Sunday evening. Most importantly, Lord, thank you for meeting with us and speaking to our hearts today. Thank you so much for the Bible and what it means to us. Lord, I pray that we would leave this place tonight determined that we'll live the Bible we've learned today that will depend upon you and the Holy Spirit of God, that will endeavor to ask you to help us to live in your power and not our power, to go in your strength and not our strength. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to die to self 
and allow Christ to live through us. Lord, we love you. We thank you for a wonderful day with the people of God. We pray your blessing upon this week and the putting together of the scriptures. I pray, God, your hand will rest upon these scriptures as we put them together. And as we pass them out about a month from now, Lord, the power of God will rest upon these. We'll touch the hearts of people who receive them. And souls will be saved and people will be strengthened in the faith. So, Father, dismiss us now with your care. Lord, make us mindful you go with us from this place. I pray that others will see Christ in us this week. And, Lord, help us to overcome Satan. Live victorious lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I pray it in his precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Once you say goodbye, don't forget all those who signed up on that mission sheet. Come right down here, the first three rows or so, and uh, we'll get you all squared away. Uh, tell you what, what's needed and what's available and uh, get you plugged in, okay? All right, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Hey, it's a be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus. Anywhere and everywhere I go For it's a grand thing To be a soldier In his army here below It's the grandest thing To be a Christian It's the best thing I know God bless you, you're dismissed